2014. A big round of applause for the real Philomena. <laughs> to find him before my demise, you know, I must find my son, because from the, when he left in 1955, no, 55, yes, um, all I knew about him was, um, I was just so upset the way he left the place at the time, but all I knew about him was, I was told to stop my nonsense and just get on with it, he's gone to a good Catholic home, and that's all I knew for 50 years, I knew he went to America to a good Catholic home. So I never knew, and I was uh, advised not to try and find him, according to the, if you've seen the book, the letter in the front of the book, I, I signed him away, and I didn't know what I was signing at the time, because I was very young at the time. But anyway, uh, I came to the age of 70, and I thought, I've really got to find him. And I hadn't told any of my family. The only, the only one I had told before I got, I became a psychiatric nurse. I went to, after Anthony uh, went to, um, America. I was so distraught. They took him away the week before Christmas and I cried for three solid weeks. I couldn't stop. I wanted him back and I think the nuns got fed up with me making a, a, a nuisance of myself. So they sent me over to, uh, they got me a job in Liverpool in a boys home, would you believe? Uh, young boys. So I got, I stayed there for two years and then I started to make a life for myself. I said I've got to find a career and do something. So I went down to where I live now in St. Albans. Uh, I went down and I started a nursing career. That was part of, you know. And over the years, I sort of kept the secret. I became a, a female, I, I married a male nurse at the hospital. So I had Kevin, my son Kevin, and then I had Jane. And I kept the secret. I told my husband before, my, my Jane's dad, before I left that, I, before I married him, I told him that I'd had a baby, but because Anthony was already gone at this stage, so he said, what's past is past, and that's it. So I never discussed it anymore. So I couldn't talk to anybody about it, never talk, spoke to anyone about having Anthony, but kept it in here with the whole of my heart. Prayed that one day I would find him. Anyway, come in, um, I came to the age of 70, as I say, and I thought I must find him. So I used to come back, the only one that knew about it was my father, which who, he disowned me then, but I understand that now. And my brother, I had one brother, he was only a youngster like myself, he was just a year and a half older than me. So he, um, he knew about Anthony, and my two sisters didn't know, and my other two brothers didn't know. You, I didn't tell them at all, and I stayed here for three and a half years without even for anybody. Uh, nobody visited me, nobody, I never had any money to buy him anything except for the little nurse. There was one lovely kind nurse and sister, and she used to give me the old bar of chocolate to give him, you know, and let me in to see him when, when I shouldn't have seen him, you know. But anyway, um, as I say, my brother knew about it. And then over the years, sorry, over the years, I, um, I used to go home, and my brother and I would say, I wonder where he is. We knew he was in America. We used, my brother used to say, is he in Vietnam? Is he on death row? Is he got drugs? Where is he? We never knew anything. Until 2002, when I came home for a holiday, and my brother, really, I come from Newcastle West, he lived in Newcastle West, he died three years ago now. And uh, he said, will you for goodness sake go back home and tell your family, I've got a son, Kevin, and my daughter, Jane. Kevin, Kevin is two, year, two years older than Jane. And I went back and told them. Uh, could I let Jane carry on the story from there? Would that be all right? What a lovely lady. So when Mum told me back in 2002, 2003 about her having had a child, um, a lot of things in my life suddenly made sense. I, I wasn't actually raised a Catholic. I was raised in the UK, but all of the other Irish parents had... Um, 
all the children went to Catholic school and we had a lot of photos of this little boy that looked like he was in an odd place. Now, of course, having come here, I understand that it was here, you know, in the convent. Um, and it all made sense. But the first thing Mum said to me was not to tell anybody. Um, but when you're told something like that, I know many of you are adopted or, you know, related to adopted people or maybe mothers. I was told that and I just couldn't not go and find his brother. Um, and actually now I'm so very glad that I did. You know, we, we had probably one of the saddest outcomes, but we now know what happened to Anthony. We know his life. We know he became Michael, that he had a very happy life. He had very good friends. He had a good partnership. Um, and when we first came here, um, and as you said, he's buried up the hill, the first thing I thought was he must have wanted to be found to get himself buried back here. And... Um, as a, as a result of Mum and Anthony's story, look, we're all here today, you know, and thanks to, you know, so many people, Mary Lord or everybody that's helped with this whole thing. Um, I think it's just amazing. We've made, to me, we're all like one big family now. We've made so many of you are our friends. I feel like I know you and everybody's got an amazing story. They're all different. It just happened that Mum's was the one that was taken up. Um, and I think that we should all, I all, I appreciate my mother because she's so, yeah. forgiving and <laughs> she's very forgiving she's not angry she's not bitter and I think that's why her story has meant so much to so many people so it's just lovely to see everybody once again thank you